Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, also HardbachElectronics.com, 203-892-4119. So, I worked on an amp earlier, and I'm waiting on a part for it, so I figured, why not work on my own personal amp? So I'm going to go over what I did, and what's left to do on this part of it, okay? So, I think I'm going to add a thermal switch, so if the ambient room temperature were too high, It'll just shut the amp down, so I don't have to. So I don't have to worry about damaging the tube or other components. It's easy to do. I wire it in series with the pressure interlock. Okay, there's that, and then I need to pull the board out for the soft start, which is easy. There are four screws that hold this assembly in, and two connectors come unplug, pull it out, unplug the two connections on the board, and there are four screws. Pull that out and um, put it all back in. Okay, so there's that. I installed the pressure interlock fitting. The RF deck will have one also. I just need to add that real quick and it'll just plug into each other. So basically if the blower quit, stopped working, or plugged or something, who knows, it'll just shut it down, shut the filament down, shut everything down, and it won't come on until it senses pressure. So I'll explain all these after, have fuses, and this is the switch side of the plate supply, filament. Now these are 250 amp rated, and these are 100 amp rated. These are for the filament connections. So, this is the very act to fine tune the filament voltage. So, I've said before, plate supply is separate. You know, just the two transformers will be wired in parallel. So. I like using GTO 15 wire more than I need and have heavier gauge than I need and the uh, dielectric rating is, is a lot more than I need but um, I like using this wire so it's nice and thick. So it goes through this copper, uh, that was a tin copper braided material. So this will go through a grommet and then I'll put a ring terminal on and this will be bonded to the power supply cabinet. On the other end, it goes through a grommet, ring terminal, crimp, soldered, heat trunk, bonded to the cabinet. Have a big zip tie for strain relief, then small zip ties, and it's soldered to the board. Full wave bridge rectifier, and zip tie to these holder, these sticky things that keep it in place. So, this amp's using a multimeter for one of the meters. Measures uh, play voltage, filament voltage, and uh, I think 12 volts and 24 volts. So two uh, low voltage supplies. So originally I had a different setup for the high voltage meter, but because I'm using caps in series, it, it won't work. Uh, before it used one cap, and the way it was configured, it you know had uh, a variable resistor. But anyway, it won't get in. It just won't work. So I had to go this route and there was a workaround for using the multimeter switch like they do in a Drake. So you have the uh, dropping resistor on the output side of the high voltage fuse. I think it's 100 mega ohm. And you know when you're using a multimeter switch, meter, I'm sorry, multimeter switch like that, you can't just use a dropping resistor and have it floating. Like when it's not selected to the high voltage meter, you can't just let it float. And even if you were connected directly to the high voltage meter, it's a good idea to put a diode across the meter just in case the meter movement opened. I learned that a long time ago. You don't want the full B positive there. It's very unlikely, but it could happen. So with the multimeter switch, so I have the dropping resistor. It's connected to a three terminal strip. Middle one's grounded, not connect, but I have nothing connected to it. Um, so on the other end of the resistor goes up to the RF deck to the meter. And on the other side of it, I have all the B-negative connections. I have the B-negative coming off the diodes and the filter caps. And also, you know, it goes up the RF deck. And then I have reverse connected diodes. I have three 10-amp diodes, parallel three, and then another three, and they're, they're reverse connected. So 1,200 amps worth of protection, full current protection. So if you ever have a short on the B positive, stops the B negative from rising up to the same potential as the plate. Okay, so 
I put a 100K 3 watt MOF metal oxide film resistor between the meter side of the dropping resistor and the B negative. So when the multimeter is not on high voltage, I won't end up with the you know with the high voltage at the actual rotor switch. Okay, easy peasy. Same way Drake does it. Okay, so that's all set. So people Okay, so someone may say, well, what if the fuse opens up? How do you really know what's going on? So, I did it like this for a reason. So, yes, if the fuse opens up, the positive meter will drop to zero. Okay? To know if the filter caps, you know, to know if the fuse opened up or if the filter caps are still charged, I'm going to have a neon indicator lamp. The front panel and I'll, Jim had the idea, actually gave me this idea, he said put a couple in series and put it across the last capacitor, which is over here, it has like 300 something volts DC across it. Well, I said, well, why don't I just use one, I can use one indicator, and then just use the proper series dropping resistor. So, that'll tell me, it'll give me a rough indication, you know, that the caps are, you know, if that's lit, then the caps are charged. But if it's not lit, you still don't assume just, you always, you, well, don't assume they're discharged. You always want to assume that they are still charged. So, even if that goes out, I would still come in here. I'm going to have a, you know, shorting stick, but I'm not going to, you know, just short each one. I'll have a resistor in series and go across each one. Um, actually, first I'd probably go in here with a high voltage probe and then check. And then go in here with the, the stick and, you know, go through the resistor for each one and then, after that, then you go and you short each one. So you just don't want to take a chance. It's not a laughing matter. You don't want to take a chance with capacitors, especially ones that store this much energy. Because if one of these is charged, you touch it, you're you're done. That's it. You're done. You're gonna die. It, you just don't want to take that chance. So I am like, I'm still scared of this. You know, with high voltage. I think that's why I'm still here because I I just don't. I don't play around. I don't come in here and, you know, do all sorts of things with it on, all that stuff, any, in, in any amplifier. So you always want to respect high voltage. I can't say that enough. So the indicator thing is easy to do. Uh, this will let me know right away if the fuse were to open. So that's that. So, um, so we are almost there. just can't wait till this is done. It's been a lot of work and I'm not getting paid to do it, so. <laughs> but That's about it for now. Uh, I need to look around for that thermal switch. I know I have one somewhere. Somewhere. I bought a bunch for another amp I did and I know they're here somewhere, so if not I'll just... Uh, you can go right on eBay actually and they, uh, they give you, like, you can pick almost any temperature rating you want. You know, they have them where they're, you know, in Celsius, Fahrenheit. You just have to do the conversion, you know, depending on where you live. Figure out what's what. But, um, well, thanks for watching, and I will be back soon. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Websites again are ampreparguy.com and also harbachelectronics.com. 203-892-4119-73. Hey, I forgot to show something. So this is an Alden plug. Alden high voltage plug. These are awesome. I haven't been able to source them with the thicker wire. Uh, the ones that they have available have a very thin gauge, small gauge wire. So this is stock, this came in the cabinet. This is an interlock. This will shut it down if this is, shut the plate down and everything else down if this assembly is removed. Okay, so it's set up, this was stock. This is how it was stock. This is secured to here. It has to be positive, be negative. Sorry about that. Um, so this will plug in, will plug into each other. And this is secured with four screws. Goes over this hole right here, see the four. Attachment points right there. Goes through metal flexible conduit up to the RF deck.
So that's how the B positive and B negative are brought up to the RF deck. Hey, thanks for watching. 73.